If you are accessing the internet through an LTE connection, improving signal strength is probably something you want to do. It is very likely that your device has several LED indicators and you want them all to light up. But I'm here to tell you that getting them all light up might actually lead to undesirable things like lower download speeds and higher ping. Okay, why do we have these LEDs if having them light up makes our internet worse? Well, it is not that simple. Radio communication has evolved a lot over the years and while in the past just being able to receive a strong signal in a given frequency was good enough to be able to communicate, it is no longer the case for cellular data. There are several reasons for this, such as the radio noise and interference from other electronic equipment the need to modulate and encode data digitally, and the fact that a typical cellular device is likely going to be communicating over several frequencies or bands at the same time. All this complicates things, and hence one measurement is usually not enough to get a clear picture of what is going on in your device. But don't worry, you can still evaluate your connection and perhaps even improve your bandwidth and latency. If we have a look at my device, I can monitor my LTE interface by clicking on it and selecting the cellular tab, and alternatively I can do the same from the terminal. As you can see, there are quite a few numbers for identification and many measurements. First you have IDs, which essentially indicate what exactly you have connected to. Each cell tower will have a base station, typically providing coverage for more than one band through the use of multiple cells, and the area that they are supposed to cover is split into sectors. In short, those numbers could help you indicate the cause of a problem. For example, you might be able to reach two cell towers using the same band, but you experience issues when connecting to one and not the other. But for the most part, you don't need to worry about them, as your device should connect to the best one by default. Further down, you have three long identifiers. That is your cellular fingerprint, if you will. And finally, we get the measurements, but as it tends to be with cellular, things are even more complicated than they appear at first. These measurements are only for your primary band, and when carrier aggregation is taking place, the device is using other bands as well, and the measurements for those are not reported to the user. The implication is that sometimes drought packets or high latency might be caused by one of the aggregated bands. You would not know that until you test them in isolation as your primary band. We could keep going down the rabbit hole, trying to cover all the components and how they work and how to troubleshoot, but that would be a two hour video. Let's consider the most basic scenario. You are connecting to a single cell and you want your internet to go fast. While you cannot control how much network resources are available from your mobile operator, you can try to improve your signal by moving your device, placing it higher up if it's outdoors, and changing the direction it is pointing at if it is not an omnidirectional device. So how do we know if our signal is poor? The LEDs on your device are usually set to display a routerized internal value modem signal which returns RSRP measurement if it is available and RSSI if it is not. RSSI is a very basic signal measurement that is actually more or less useless on its own as it does not take into account whether the signal that is being received is actually usable for encoding data and whether it is even coming from the correct device at the other end. RSRP on the other hand is much better as it is a calculated measurement that reports the average signal strength in parts of the radio signals received that could actually be used for encoding data. But RSRP measurement cannot tell you whether actual data can be received or whether all that is detected is noise and interference. And that is what SINR or signal to interference plus noise ratio is designed to help us with. In a hypothetical scenario where there is no interference or noise, you could probably be able to achieve a good throughput even if your signal was at the bare minimum and only one of five LEDs lights up on your device. So for the average user, SINR is probably the single most important measurement to look at when judging their signal. The other measurements that you can monitor are not as important. RSRQ is already factored in the SINR measurement and CQI and MCS will in general be higher the higher your SINR is. And finally, RI is showing you whether you are taking advantage of MIMO or not. As you can see on my device, I'm only using one antenna while in theory if my operator offered it, I could be using four. 
Thank you for watching. LTE and 5G communication can get very complicated, but I hope this basic guide will help you achieve the maximum possible throughput in your location.